You make the decision. By the time you get out of the seals, and, and you know, people can read your mm-hmm. book. You have such a great book, Transformed, and we're going to plug it throughout this interview. Yeah. Get out of the seals. You're married. Two I'm kids. Married two kids, yeah. Two kids. Yeah. What do you do, and how does your life transition to the next phase of your life? Yeah. Which is such an incredible story <laughs> because it is really – I went from the hood to Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I got out, I got out, I had a plan. My plan was I'm a speaker because I had already started doing speaking before I got out. You know, I, you know, like not big stuff, but just like local churches would say, hey, we want you to come share your story. We want you to come minister. To the so I would speak at churches here and there. And then, you know, I would get asked to speak at corporate events, little stuff here and there. And uh, so when I got out, I was like, that's going to be my job. I'm going to be like a Tony Robbins. Get out, I'm going to speak, motivate people. I got the story to do it. I got the qualification to do it. And at this point, I had already finished my bachelor's, and I was working on my master's at this point when I got out. And so, you know, I got my master's in organizational strategy with a, speciali- with a specialization, specialization in strategy as practice. So I figured I'd take all of those concepts, merge them with my life story, and go do the consulting speaking type gigs. And when I got out, my phone wasn't ringing. <laughs> Nobody was calling me. Like, and I was just like, damn, what the heck is going on? You know what I mean? Like, I've already, I set myself up for success and I'm banging on doors. Let me get a job. Let me come speak. I'll do it for free. And there's nothing. And that, and that's when I was just like, man, the rejection. Again, like, I, was, I faced rejection in, in the music industry. I faced rejection and trying to get into the SEAL teams. And now I'm facing rejection again. And so in my mind, I was just like, like you know what? I'm going to take the easy route. You know, and looking back, I say, at the time, I didn't see it as the easy route. But I think in retrospect, I truly believe I was trying to take the easy route. And what that meant for me was, I was like, I'm going to apply to the agency. The CIA, we call it the agency. And, and the reason why I was going to do that is because one of my, my, my jobs in the SEAL teams, I was a human guy. And every SEAL platoon, every SEAL has a job. Sniper, breacher, point man, you know, all, you all these different jobs. But one job that's not talked about a lot is human intelligence, which is humans. And so I went to all of these different schools, NSA interagency. You know, I trained with three-letter agencies, how to sneak in and out of countries, run sources, do all of that kind of stuff. And given my background growing up in the streets, I did great at that job because I knew how to read people. <laughs> I, when I was overseas and somebody was trying to play me, I knew what was up. Like, it was like I got it. I had lived that life, so I was able to really do it. And uh, so that, that type of specialization translates into three-letter agency work. So that's why I was, I was like, I'm going to go apply. So I started the application process for the agency. I got about three weeks in. And all of a sudden, the recruiter who I was talking to dropped off the map. So I was like, man, maybe I didn't qualify. Maybe they found something on my record or something like that. And so I, that, job went, that job in my mind went away. I'll tell you what happened later, but in reality, it didn't. Two weeks later, you know, at my computer, this very computer desk right here, writing papers for grad school, my phone rings. And this lady's on the other end of the line. And she's like, hey, Remy, you know, I got your number from so-and-so. Um, I work with Michael Bay, and he's working on this new movie called Transformers of Last Night, and he's looking for somebody with your background, former Navy SEAL, African American, to help out on the show, some consulting, some background stuff. Are you available? And I was like, Michael Bay, Bad Boys, The Rock, them two films inspired me to be a SEAL? Bay, yeah, man, let's, let's do this. So she was like, all right, send me some pictures. You don't have to be professional, just pictures of you in your uniform and stuff so I can show Bay and if he likes it, you got the job. But like, sure, so I sent her pictures. And it's just supposed to be one day. So I sent her pictures, she called me back, she was like, all right, can you be up in LA tomorrow? We're gonna start filming in LA tomorrow. I'm like, easy day, go up to LA, I meet Michael Bay, meet Josh Dumel, some of the other actors, and I do that one day. And it was cool, and it was an awesome experience, you know, because of the fact of where I came from. And I was like, man, I was like, man, man I wanna tell this dude that his film is inspired, but I didn't, you know, you probably, you know how people are, oh yeah, I heard that, we lying. I was like, so I didn't say nothing, I didn't say nothing. 
And uh, and then two weeks later, she hits me up. She's like, Dave likes working with you. He wants to know if you could do three more weeks on the movie. I was like, all right, cool. So I fly out to Arizona. I do a week. We film it out in Arizona. And then I had a week off. I flew to Israel because I was doing some work out in Israel. And then I flew back from Israel and I did two weeks of filming in Michigan. And then at the end of the two weeks, this casting lady comes up to me. She's like, Bay wants to keep you on for the rest of the film. You are you, what's your schedule looking like? And I was like, I'm free. What's up? So, so, so he's like, all right, cool. You're staying on for the rest of the film. You're going to get upgraded, get a principal role and get upgraded. I was like, great. So I got upgraded to a principal role and then flew to London. You know, I worked with Mark Wahlberg, Anthony Hopkins. I'm like a dude from the Bronx and hanging with Mark and, and Anthony Hopkins and, you know, <laughs> They on a major film set, you know, Hannibal Lecter, <laughs> you know, legends in the game. And so I did that and, you know, we wrapped filming in December and, you know, that's kind of how I got into the industry, man. And it was- Can we, can we stop there for a second? Yeah. Because first, yeah. I need to say God is so good. Amen. Anybody watching this that doesn't understand mm -hmm that God has a plan for you, whether Amen. you can see it, whether you decide to listen to the voice and adhere to it, mm -hmm. God has a plan for you because Amen. you had no intention None. of ever being an actor. You had no intention of ever going to <laughs> None. <laughs> None. And, so, and you know, and you know I, I tell, as a matter of fact, I, just to backtrack a little bit, that that same lady had hit me up two years earlier to do work on a project uh, called The Last Ship. Just sit on the boat, not do any real acting stuff. She was like, they just need somebody who knows how to be on a small boat to sit on the boat. Can you do it? And I, and I reluctantly did it, and I hated it. I hated it. I was just like, this is dumb. Why am I doing this? And so when she hit me, and then she hit me back for another job a year later, commercial, I said, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not trying to be an actor. That's not me. And I turned a job down, which would have paid me a lot of money, but I didn't realize that until later. And then, uh, and, and so, yeah, it was no, that was not in my cards, you know, but something I try to tell people all the time in that story is two things. One, you got to be open sometimes to opportunities. You gotta be open to do things that you wouldn't normally do. Because within that opportunity, you may A, find your true calling, which I'll explain later. I found my true calling in being on that movie set. And it's not active. And I'll get to that a little bit later. And, 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 and B, the second thing out of that story is, you know, well, first thing, you might find your calling, or two, you might, you might discover things about yourself or set yourself up for a future career that you don't even, that, that may even be your dream. So that's the first thing I say. And the second thing I say about that whole story is, is nothing in life is wasted. Nothing in life is wasted. And I'm going to tell you why. Because all that speaking I was doing on that small level, as I was getting out and, you know, people not calling me back when I got out and me not getting a job, all of that stuff prepared me to be on a movie set. Because, but I didn't know it. So I now here I'm on a movie set, all these cameras around me, all these people around me. I'm used to being on the stage speaking. Ain't no stage fright. They like, yo, let me say your lines. All right. This girl comes up to me, she says, does that thing kill Decepticons? I'm like, no, we do. Check out. <laughs> <laughs> There's no worry. There's no fear because I've already done that. I know how to act right on set. Because when I was in the teams, I had to be humble because I got humbled earlier. So all of these, these lessons, the rejection, the failures, all of those things are not a waste. They, they, they will. And all of those things unconsciously prepare me. So oh, now oh, when oh, I want to oh, set, back, the, the, there's the, no, it's the, not the, for me. The internet just went back. You just start okay. where you said it's not a waste. It's, it's, it's not a waste because if you, if you really look at it, it will prepare you for your next level. And all of those things, the failures, the rejection, the setbacks, the lessons and speaking and all of that stuff, it all prepared me to be on a movie set. And here I am three weeks, four weeks in, 
and I get bumped to a principal role. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.